After so many requests, I finally decided to make a video on something other than a tank. And it's a video about T-15 Armata Infantry Fighting Vehicle. I wasn't really interested in making videos on other armored vehicles, since there isn't really much to talk about. They literally have no armor and their autocannon penetration is irrelevant, since they can't penetrate tanks other than the side and rear and can penetrate everything else. But T-15, with the exception of few others, is different. Since it actually has armor, new projectile, special guns, etc. Depends how well this video does, I might make a video on German Puma as well. But before we go any further, I want to take a moment to talk about my sponsor, War Thunder. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. Ok, let's start with the firepower. This isn't really simple, because T-15 can be produced with several main guns, including 30mm, 57mm, 75mm and 100mm guns. Currently the standard is 30mm 2A42 autocannon mounted on Boomerang BM weapon station that has interchangeable parts with Boomerang and Kurganet's infantry fighting vehicles station, since it is universal for all of those vehicles, which in turn makes this a very good decision logistics wise. However, some T-15s have been made with AU 220M turret armed with BM 57 57mm autocannon which has a rate of fire of 120 rounds per minute, and a whole variety of ammunition including APF-SDS, guided artillery shells and multi-purpose high explosive. The penetration of APF-SDS is sadly unknown, however the secondary armament is what makes this vehicle good against tanks. When armed with Boomerang BM weapon station, it is equipped with 4 Cornet EM-80 GMs that have around 1300mm penetration after ERA, which is enough to take out majority of modern tanks, since 30mm autocannon is not made to counter tanks, but softer armored ground vehicles and helicopters. Another good thing about this is that it can fire two ATGMs at the same time at two different targets, while one is guided by the gunner and the other by the commander, which is excellent for engaging multiple targets at the same time. But with AU-220M, it has two Ataka ATGMs that aren't as good, having 950mm penetration after ERA, and can be fired only one at a time. But nevertheless, the firepower is excellent for modern combat. For fire control systems, sadly, I could not find any information on Boomerang BM station. But from the pictures available from the inside of the vehicle, we can see that battle management system is indeed present, but the generation of thermal cameras is what is currently unknown. However, it would make sense that they are third generation, since both T14 and T90M have third generation thermals, so it can be the case that T15 got it as well. But on AU220M, since it is older, the only available information is from the year it got introduced, stating that acquisition range is 4 kilometers, making it a second generation site but they could have as well changed the thermal cameras since then for T-15. And being that it is a vehicle on Armata platform, its protection is very good. Although the crew is not stationed inside of the protective capsule, based on this photo where you can see the crew compartment from the rear of the vehicle, but the thing is that they don't really need to be inside one. The main reason why there is a capsule on T-14 Armata in the first place is to protect the crew from ammunition fire or detonation. But since the ammunition of T-15 is inside of the turret, there is no need to make a capsule around the crew. There is only armor between them and the engine to protect them in case if the engine catches fire. The front is equipped with explosive reactive armor nicknamed Malarkit. 
and the armor is speculated to be equivalent to around 800mm against APFSDS and 1400mm against heat, but it's not specified if it is with or without the array. Nevertheless, for an infantry fighting vehicle, that is very good. The sides are equipped with 4S24 blocks, which are excellent against heat, even tandem shaped ones. There is also a new type of ERA mounted over engine exhaust. It could be that it is 4S23 put inside the plate since it is angled to increase the performance, and since it would be really hard putting 4S24 the similar way, since the room for the exhaust would have to be made, while also providing protection from the sides and hits from different angles. The vehicle is also equipped with Afghanid hard kill active protection system, which can shoot down any incoming shaped charge munition and can even intercept APFSDS projectiles, which seems to be very likely since Ukrainians released footage of their similar APS intercepting APFSDS projectile and multiple countries, including Germany and Israel, have already developed similar APS systems. And on top of that, the vehicle is equipped with laser warning receivers as well as all-around cameras. The roof armor above the crew is covered with ERA to reinforce the protection against top attack ammunition, and the turret has blowout panels for the rounds of the main gun, which further increases its survivability. It can transport 9 troops inside, which is practically one squad of men. Mobility is also great, the vehicle weighs 55 tons and just like on T14, the engine is 1350 horsepower X layout, 12 churn 12N 360 engine, producing 4747 Nm of torque, giving it a maximum speed of around 70 km per hour, both forward and reverse. The engine's power can be increased to 1500 horsepower, but is capped at 1350 during peacetime to increase the engine's lifespan. It also has automatic transmission and driver is equipped with front thermal camera for night driving and rear camera giving him excellent view when controlling the vehicle. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. All in all, I have to say I'm pretty amazed by T-15. It is practically a tank with an autocannon that can bring an entire squad into battle. But the problem is that there is only a handful of them. I couldn't find any specific number but since there are only 50 T-14 armatas, that can only mean there are even less T-15s, since in early 2019 an order has been placed for armata vehicles, and it included 14 T-14 tanks and 2 T-16 recovery vehicles, no T-15s. So the number has to be much lower than the number of T-14s. But we will have to see how their production will develop in the future. And that would be all, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new, it also helps quite a lot. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video, have a nice day.